Hello traders and welcome back to the Forex Bolt Trading Academy educational video. Today we will look at the Fibonacci, specifically trading using Fibonacci retracement indicator. And you will learn in this video how to apply FIBs in a very unique way developed by myself. So something that you have never seen before. We will discuss how to find entry points, stop loss and take profit levels, as well as the support and resistance areas. And finally, you will learn few trading techniques using purely Fibonacci retracement indicator. But before we get started, do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the notification bell to follow the videos we do every single day, such as this one, educational videos, as well as live trade examples and daily market analysis. So let's start. We are looking at the euro versus the dollar. Basically, we can apply Fibonacci on any time frame, on any currency pair or on any asset. It works because this is one of the most common indicators used by traders. And it is so popular simply because it is extremely effective if applied correctly. So this is the reason we decided to make this video and to share some of the interesting ways of using this indicator. Well, let's start with the most simple way of using FIPS. So we go into indicators, choosing Fibonacci retracement, and we can apply it to the low and high. So we are using two points. We can use either the lowest point, the overall trend, or we can use only the last wave to the upside because in our case we are having an uptrend. Now you can see that I have used this low where we're having this last wave to the upside. But what is also very important is spot support and resistance levels prior to that. Because if I place the level here, which is the initial low, which hasn't been broken, we should apply actually FIPS to this level rather than the this. So this is the last wave to the upside. And if we zoom it in, we can change it even to this wave. So we can see there are multiple Fibonacci can be used on one single chart. Well, of course, the most common would be the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level, because this is where the price tends to retrace the most. There are also other levels which are not commonly used, but still extremely popular, which is 78.6 and 88.6 retracement level, which you can simply add by double clicking your FIBs and adding any levels you want here you can mark whether to display it or not, and you can change the colors and so on. Very, very useful tool on the TradingView platform. So what we have is the most common levels. And obviously, the most of interest would be at 61.8 FIBs most of the time. As an example, if we apply to the last wave up, go to the one hour chart. This was the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. And as you can see, it did act as the support. But the most interesting thing is when the price actually bounces cleanly of the FIBs. Example we can see right there where there was a rejection of 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level. So we see the rejection of the 61.8 FIBs. Most interest was there. But the most important from my perspective is when price cleanly bounces of the FIBs. As an example, we can see 38.2% FIBs has been rejected cleanly. And this is your point of interest because there was the rejection, this clean bounce. And if I go to one hour chart, we can see it more clearly that the price is producing higher highs and higher lows. So how to use this spot when you have a clean rejection of the FIBs? Well, you can use yet another Fibonacci retracement indicator applied to this correction. Because what we see is the rejection of the 61.8 and then we had the rejection clean one of the 38.2. What I would do is to use another FIPS applied to this high and this low. Very important is that the rejection is clean. You don't want to see any sort of spikes. It must be just a clean bounce. That's it. As simple as that. This is extremely important when using Fibonacci. So zoom it out. Now what this Fibonacci tells us is that where we might be seeing the resistance 
and I have applied Fibonacci 127.2 FIPS, 161.8 FIPS, and just it goes 200, 300, 400, and so on. You can put as much as you like, but I did put as much as I could fit, basically, and we have up to 1161.8 FIPS right there. And yet again, you can put these levels manually on the trading view. So this tells us that this could be one of the resistance levels. Now we are coming up to the point of the trade opportunity. What I do like to see in this sort of rejections is that either 200 or 50 simple moving average is rejected. And we can check multiple time frames for this sort of rejection. As we can see on the one hour chart, there was a break and close below. On the 30 minutes is the same, on the 15 the same. But what we have is the four hour chart and there was the rejection of the 50 simple moving average. You can see my two moving averages are right at the top with different colors. You can also simply add them by going indicators and typing moving average. We have approached the opportunity, potentially a buying opportunity, considering that we had the rejection of the moving average right there and we had it yet again. So Fibonacci in combination with the moving averages could be a very, very powerful. And in fact, this could be the only indicators used for trading. You don't need anything else to have a good strategy. Well, you can add more filters, but it's up to you. As for the minimum, these two indicators are enough, moving average and the Fibonacci. Because the moving average tells us the direction of the market, while the Fibonacci tells us where is the opportunity for the buying or selling can be presented. So we have this rejection, it's not precise, it's not very clean, but still it's almost at the same price. And now what we need to do in order to have a buying opportunity, obviously we need to break above the previously made high. At this point, we didn't have this breakout. And what could be this breakout? How to confirm it? What time frame to use? One hour chart, four hour chart or daily chart? It's very simple. You know this by checking on which time frame there was the rejection of the Fibonacci retracement level. So as soon as you have this information, you know that we need a four hour close above this resistance. It is very important that price breaks above, but not like this. There was a spike, but closing below. We need a close above. Now the price has produced a spike and obviously we need to have a close above the spike in order to confirm the uptrend. What could be our trading opportunity? In this scenario, if there will be this breakout, we can have a limit order to buy at this level. In regards to the stop loss and take profit, we had a clean rejection here, although we might still have the spike below. Price can spike lower and we need to be protected from that. So I would use the overall low and in regards to the take profit, I would be using the risk to reward ratio of two. So simply increase it and see where is that price. What we see is correspondence with a 527.2 FIPS at 125.00. So this is 250 FIPS away from the current price. And now what we have is waiting for buying opportunity upon this breakout. Once we have it, we place the limit order to buy. At the same time, we can use Fibonacci cycles to see where could be that cycle. For this reason, I'm going to the 30 minute chart and I'm going to use these two levels to apply my FIPS to. As an example, we have Fibonacci cycles indicator applying that to these two points. So waiting for the break to the upside and then Potentially price will correct down, so this could be this opportunity or price will consolidate and maybe at this stage there will be this buying opportunity. But at the same time, what we might be seeing is the fast move to the upside, rejection of this FIPS and then price will go down. Also possible. For this reason, after the breakout, there must be no rejections of the FIPS that you have applied. If there is a rejection, there is no point entering. In fact, you could start looking for selling opportunities exactly the same way 
as we just did for the buying opportunity. Because clean rejection, such as this one, means that there is a potential for the trend reversal. So there are several scenarios. Either price can increase further and reverse if there will be a rejection or price could be going up, then consolidate. And it, this consolidation can take a lot of time. And for example, it corrects towards this price. So this could be our entry point because it corresponds with the Fibonacci cycle. It's a good price for entering because we increase the risk to reward ratio and then we are seeking for this sort of opportunity. So we have everything in place. We have stop loss, we have take profit and we have the entry point. Everything is crystal clear. You don't have to do any guesswork. That's the beauty. Your strategy has to tell you exactly what to do and when to do it. Now let's look at some unconventional ways of using Fibonacci retracement indicator. And I will be drawing now ascending channel. So what we have is connecting two points, two highs and the lowest point in between them. Sometime there could be a double top or a double bottom. In our case, the Imagine that this low would have been right there. So I would need to use my channel like that. But we, we see that there was a break below this previously made low. So I need to use this low. And at the moment we don't have any breakouts. Price is moving within the channel. But if I go to 30 minute chart and we do the same, we can apply channel also here. Always try to use the latest channel, not the oldest. And the latest what we have is two lows and the highest point in between them. Nothing has happened. So let's use the previous ones. It is very tricky to use them in that sort of condition. But this is exactly why I have chosen this example, because it's tough. It's not really what you see in a perfect case scenario. So I would use these two points and the highest point in between them. I use this low because as I have explained previously, this is the initial low. There was no breakout. So I use this low and these are the two points. Now we have our channel and what we have also, we have the break above the channel. And we are interested in this point, in this breakout. What I would do next is yet again use simple fibs and I would apply it from the bottom to the top so that 50% is at the breakout point of the channel. This tells me that the distance within the channel could be equal to the distance after the breakout of the channel. So this is our upside target or resistance that we might be looking for. This is how you also can calculate how far the price might be going. And of course your entry would be at 61.8. This is the most common level. And of course your entry point could be 61.8 or one of these other FIPS. So after we have the breakout, we see that there was no clean rejection of any of the FIPS. Make sure of that, then wait for the correction and then enter potentially 61.8. Even if we would enter 61.8, this could have been our trade entering at this level. Stop loss below the previously made low, take profit, at this point. This case, the risk to reward ratio is 156, but we can also use a different approaches, decrease it to have a risk reward ratio of two. In our case, we have the potential target at 122.66. This could have been our trade, which means that there is still potential for the upside growth on the euro versus the dollar. Nonetheless, there are scenarios that you, you can see in the market, like price will go down, read races and then go down. So we need to see that there was a clean rejection and yet again you can use FIBS to apply to this correction and yet again you can use the approach of the break below the previously made low and entering a short trade. I hope you understand that the clean bounce is extremely important. We need to see these clean bounces and this will give us some good indications whether the price is ready to move towards the direction that we expect or not. So this will increase the probability. Now, another way to use FIBS is also to the breakout, applying to the breakout, but 
to the trend lines. And guys, I have made a separate video where we explain how you can use the trend lines because there is no right or wrong way. It's just what works for you. So we need to apply the trend line. And what I do, I use the lowest point prior to the price making a new higher high. So at this point, we had a new higher high and this is the lowest point prior to that. So I will connect this low and I will connect this low because this is the low prior to producing a new higher high. If the price would have been at this stage, my trend line would have been like that because this is the point prior to producing a new higher high. So we have the trend line and we can use Fibonacci to apply to this breakout. So let's do that. And for this, we would probably need to go to lower time frames to make it very precise because with Fibonacci, you have to be precise. Moving to the one hour chart, making sure that our levels are in line. We have it good here and we might need to adjust it at this point. So it's a bit lower. Now let's apply FIBS to this breakout. So from the very top to the bottom, we draw in our FIBS and the breakout point is there. Now what it tells us is that there was the breakout, but there was no clean rejection of any of the FIBS. So there is a potential for the downside move. Our trade in this case could have been a short. So this could be an entry 61.8 FIBS at this point, stop loss above the previously made high, take profit at this point. We can also place the stop loss to make it risk to reward ratio of two. So adjusting lower, this will be our stop loss. And yet, as you can see, guys, if we get, have a break and close above this level now, another signal would have confirmed the buy opportunity. But as long as the price remains below the 88.6, 88.6 FIPS is holding, which means that this opportunity is still valid. And as you remember, we had another opportunity on the four hour time frame, which gave us a buy signal upon the break and close above. So what we need to do is to wait for this closing price. And we now have two opportunities, buying euro dollar and selling. Now you could have the hedge. At this moment, there would be only the sell trade which has triggered and there is no confirmation for the buying trade yet. So as soon as this trade kicks out, if that will be the case, you could get into a buying opportunity to cover your losses and potentially make some profit on top of that. Now, another point, guys, after the breakout of the trend line, what you want to see is rejections. And we could have entered at 61.8, but as you can see, there was a clean bounce of 88.6 and this could have been your point of entry because there was extremely clean rejection, price spiked above, price spiked above again, but yet failed to confirm the bullish trend yet. So this is the ways you could use FIBS differently and it gives you not only entries, but also potential upside targets and potential stop loss levels to watch. Now, at the same time, guys, look, there was a closing price right at 23.6 FIPS. And this means that this could have been the rejection. So in fact, while we would have waited for the short opportunity right there, if you see the rejection, you don't act. So now there is only a buying opportunity that remains active upon a break and close above this four hour chart. And this is how you can use for any currency pair on any market, on any assets, whether it's crypto, whether it's stocks, commodities, indexes, anything. It just works that way. And you can develop so many different strategies using these approaches. So that's it on the Fibonacci. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you find it useful, please don't forget to click the like and subscribe to our channel to follow the videos we do every day. And we will see you very soon with yet another great educational video. Take care and till next time.